Hi everyone, my name is Dan and I'm the Content Manager here at Explain. Joining me today is Serkan, our Senior Frontend Engineer, who will be performing the development demonstration of creating your own text-based adventure game from scratch to deployment. So today, we're excited to bring you a video on how to create your very own classic text-based adventure game using GPT and the Go.Game Game Engine. If you're unfamiliar with GPT, it's an artificial intelligence language model that has exploded in popularity in recent months. Created by an AI research company called OpenAI and trained on vast volumes of text data to generate human-like text-based responses to an array of prompts, the language model can answer questions, write articles, and even code. And the finest part is that it can retain information inside a single session, meaning we can utilize GPT to create our text-based adventure game similar to Zork that understands and responds in natural language input from the player. This allows for the creation of a complex and engaging game without the need to manually program every potential player action. And if you're unfamiliar with Godot, Godot is an open source, completely free game engine that we will use in our development demonstration. So if you haven't downloaded it already, you can do so from the following link. Secondly, you would need to access the GPT API, which is available via the Explain platform. Just sign up, head over to models, search for GPT, select the model and copy the API key. All right, let's begin. Sarkhan will walk you through the process of creating your own text-based adventure game from scratch. So let's get started. For this project, you'll be using the Godo game engine. To begin, we'll create a new project and name it Not So. Since our game will be text-based, we can build the entire interface using control nodes. The final result will resemble a console screen. Let's start by creating a new scene and naming the root node main. Don't forget to save the scene. For the interface controls, we'll add a panel container and name it interface. Before we proceed, we can lower the resolution to increase the ray tray effect. Next, we'll resize the dimensions of this panel to match the game's dimensions. As children of the panel container, we'll add a vertical box container. We also need two text areas, one for entering the prompts and the other for displaying the entire conversation, a line edit for user input and a rich text label for displaying the conversation. Let's name them log and input. For now, Let's add some dummy text to these areas to get a sense of how they will look. It seems that the text in the conversation area is not visible. To fix this, we need to ensure the content fits properly. Let's adjust the settings to fit the content and now we can see the dummy text. As we may have noticed, when we add new text, everything shifts down. However, we actually want the opposite effect. We want everything to move up. There is a simple fix for this. We just need to change the anchors of the interface node to bottom white. This adjustment will ensure that everything moves upward when new text is entered. To create a console-like screen, we can make several adjustments. Disable scrolling and enable scroll following to ensure that the content remains visible and new text automatically appears at the bottom. Change the auto wrap mode to ensure that the text wraps within the boundaries like a console screen. For the text input area, disable the context menu to prevent unwanted options from appearing. And we can disable the virtual keyboard. You can actually adjust this however you want. Adjust the current settings to make it blink. Set a minimum size for the input area, such as 40 pixels. Now let's work on the title bar. Add a color rectangle node and set its color to light gray. Rename it as title bar. 
adjust the size of the color rectangle to match the width of the project while setting the height to 25 pixels. Add a label within the title bar and set its text to Maxor or whatever you want. In here, we'll have some theme overrides because we want the text color as black. We will also change the position. Once we have our interface set up, we can integrate the API to make it functional. Here is how to do it. Visit the Explain website. Go to the Discover section and search for ChatGPT to find the model. Click on it to access the integration tab. If you don't have any access keys, you'll need to create one. Give a name for your access key and if you want, set active days limit. Make sure to copy the access key from this screen because you won't be able to see it again. Go back to the integration details and click on the JavaScript option. In here, you can see a short sample code. To use the API, we'll send our prompt to the provided endpoint using a simple HTTP request. This endpoint will process our request and generate another URL for us. Then, we need to periodically check that new endpoint to retrieve the response from the API. To make an HTTP request in Godot, we'll need to add an HTTP request node. Let's name this node Communicator for our project. We'll also create a script for this node called Network. In the Network script, we won't need the standard functions provided by Godot. Instead, we'll create a function called MakeGPTRequest to handle the request to explain API. The MakeGPT request function should receive the entire conversation as input because ChatGPT requires the complete history of the conversation in each prompt. To make the request, we'll create a variable called data, which will be a JSON object. We can then initiate the request using the following parameters. The first argument is the URL. You can copy the URL provided in the API integration details. The second argument is the custom headers, which will be an array. The first header should be x-api-key, and you can paste the access key here. Alternatively, you can implement a login screen in your game and retrieve the key from there. The second header should be content-type, with the value application slash json. To store the access key in a configuration file, we can create a script file called config in the autoloads folder. In this script, we won't need the existing functions. We'll simply create the variable to store the access key. In the network script, we can get the access key variable from the configuration file using this syntax. The third argument in the request HTTP client dot method post. Lastly, the fourth argument will be the request data, which should include the conversation data. To handle the conversation story, we can use an array. Let's define a function called send request to handle the prompt input. Within this function, the first step is to add the prompt to the conversation story. For ChatGPT, the conversation should be in a specific format. We need to define our role as user and provide the prompt as the content. Once the conversation is updated, we can make the GPT request. But before sending the request, we need to simplify the conversation array. To obtain the response, we'll use the request completed signal of the HTTP request node. We'll define an on request completed function within the same network script. In this function, we'll first check if the result is successful. If it's not, We'll handle the error by pushing an error message and the response data and just return.
if everything goes well, we can parse the response body using the JSON parse string function and retrieve the response using the body.getString from UTF-8 function. The response will contain a URL that we need to periodically check. To test this, we can print the response. However, to make this work, we'll temporarily include our API key here. To initiate the request, we can temporarily add a ready function and send the request with a simple prompt such as saying hello to JetGPT. We can see that the completed field is false and the data contains another URL. This URL is the one we need to periodically pull. We can store this URL into a variable. And to differentiate between polling and the initial request, we will use an isPolling flag, which will initially be set to false. Once the request is completed and we receive the response, we need to check whether we are polling the URL or if it's the initial request. Now let's start with writing the else condition. Since we are not pulling here, if the response contains a data field, we can assign the response.data to URL and set the is polling flag to true. To periodically poll the URL, we need to use a timer. Let's create a timer node called retry timer with a wait time of one second. We also need to create a function for the timer's timeout signal. Within this function, we'll make another request. Copy the request code and set the URL to the URL we obtained from the previous request. This time, the method should be set to get and we don't need to provide any data. To start the timer, we'll get a reference to the timer node. We can use the export keyword to assign the timer node and then start the retry timer when we receive the URL from the initial request. If, for some reason, the response doesn't have a data field, we can push another error. Let's try sending the initial request again and observe the second response. Since retry timer is still working, I will pause the game and review the output here. If you look at the response, it's now marked as completed. The data field contains the role as assistant and the content is how can I assist you today? This is the response generated by ChatGPT based on our initial prompt. Now we can proceed with writing the first part of our if condition. If we are polling and the response contains a completed field and if response.completed is true, we can push the response generated by ChatGPT to our conversation array. The response data will be in the first element of the data array and in the message field. After obtaining the response, we can set is polling to false and stop the timer. To send the response to the interface, we'll need to define a signal called response received. This signal will get the response as a string. We will emit the signal immediately after adding the response to the conversation array with the content field of the message as the parameter. Now we can add a new secret to the main node and connect the communicator's response received signal to our main script. And to connect the communicator's response received function to the interface, we need to create a script for the interface. In the interface script, we'll create an export variable for the rich text label node, which will be used as the conversation log. We'll also need a function called append text to log to add text to the log. Don't forget to assign the node to the variable. In the main script, we'll need a reference to the interface. In the event function, we can call the append text to log function and add the response followed by a new line character. Let's give it a try.
Here you can see the response. Now let's use it with a real prompt. First, I'll remove this. But now I need to check the inputs to see if the user pressed enter. For this, I can use the input event. If the event is action pressed and the action is UI accept, we will emit a signal called prompt submitted, which will carry the prompt text. We can emit the signal here. We need to retrieve the text from the input node, so I'll add another export variable for that purpose. Before moving forward, we need to change a setting. Normally, UI accept is triggered by the spacebar, but we need to use the spacebar while typing the text. Therefore, I'll remove it from the input actions. Now, when the user presses enter, you will emit the prompt submitted signal. Don't forget to assign the input node and we need to connect the signal to the main script. In the main script, we need a reference to the communicator node. When the prompt is submitted, we need to call the send request function of the communicator with the prompt. And we also need to add this prompt to the log. So, we will call the append text to log function. But this time, I'll use two new lines to separate the prompts. Let's clean up here, assign the communicator, and let's remove this dummy text. Well, it looks like we missed something because the input is at the top. Our vertical box container should shrink to the end. Now we can try. Let's say, hello, who are you? We can see the result here. Now, we need to instruct the chat GPT to act like the game. For this, we can add a predefined prop to the conversation array. The role is user and the content is you are emulating the game Zork 1. You will start with the first text of the game Zork and I will enter commands to play the game. Act like the game Zork 1 and don't add any comments. Start with describing my surrounding. The problem is we are only sending something if the user presses enter. So I'll add a simple function called send initial comment, which will make the request using the conversation array. And to call this function when the game starts, I'll add the ready function back here and call the communicator's send initial comment function. Now when we start the game, we can see that ChatGPT is acting like the game Zork. We can send commands just like we are playing Zork, for example, open mailbox. And that's a wrap on our tutorial for creating a classic text-based adventure game using GPT and Godot. We hope you found this video informative and that you are now inspired to create your own text-based adventure game. Remember, GoDot is completely free, so there's nothing stopping you from getting started today. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome upcoming tutorials. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.